Welcome back guys. I know we are going to do a 250. If you watch the 450, that's going to be in the link in the description. So we're going to do a 450 season prediction video. And I've got Chris Cooksey here with Cooksey Media. Yes. We just did 450. We're doing 250 now, did Hopper. I say... You said 450. The reason that bad things happen to you is because you're a dumbass. Dude, I'm going to blame it on the con concussions. This is the 250 prediction video and I'm probably gonna misspell something too. So here we go. All right, so Chris, just for some of the viewers that don't know who you are, uh, just a brief overview of, of what you do. For I'm sport. a washed up racer. I worked in the industry, I work in the industry and I've been around the industry my entire life. I love the sport and I just like talking about it. Awesome. And you can find me at cooksymedia.com. I got a website. Um, usually after the races and hear the press conferences, the dude that asks the question where everyone gets mad, that's usually me. Hence why we're, we've gotten together to make this prediction video. A couple outcasts. Yup. So I'm just going to jump right into it. Who do you think your rookie for 2021 condensed COVID season is going to be? It's been really hard to kind of track these rookies because it's not like any other year where you can just go to the tracks and see who's going fast or they're, and they're doing videos and stuff. So I watched Loretta Lynn's. I saw the guys riding and I was trying to figure out which ones were going to race the national the next week. There's a kid by the name of Dylan Schwartz. Have you watched okay. him at all? Bar X Suzuki. I haven't. He's fast. The only thing that I don't like. Still amateur? This is going to be him? This will be his pro debut. Okay. And he's going to, I believe he's going to ride the whole season. Um, he was the fastest guy consistently. Styles Robertson won everything, but he got bad starts. He's on a Suzuki. I mean, what else? It's a Suzuki 252, so it's it's only about 30 years old. <laughs> They've made a couple changes, maybe graphics since then. I don't yeah. know. Well, I would say you would think as a a hot prospect, come amateur coming up, it's not a stock Suzuki by any means. And in the amateur, I feel like you could get away with that a little bit more than you can in the pros. I feel there's less of a gap between Monster Energy, Kawasaki, and the Smart Top Honda guys versus them in yes. the pros. But I liked his style. I liked the way he went through the pack. And I think a lot of times when I look at the red lens, I don't look for the guy that has the most championships. I look for a guy Usually the guys that win all the championships don't learn a race craft that you really need and that will make you successful in the pros. Because you take a guy who dominates Loretta's, he's gonna be in the middle of a pack the entire time, Schwartz was, and I think that's gonna to translate to some inside the top 20 point finishes. I think he'll get some points. I don't think he's gonna get up in the top 10 or top five or anything crazy, but he's gonna have a solid first season. So you're saying you learn more from your failures than your successes? Yes. And he's 16. How old is he? Um, I don't know. I think he's I think he's 17 or 18. They're graduating him out a little bit slower than they used to. Okay. Unless they're All just right. some ridiculous talent like Jet. Well, I'm gonna go the complete opposite of what he said. I'm gonna go with Carson Mumford, some kid that has been a pretty much an AC of the sport as a young age. I think he's on that Geico Honda. I think we're gonna see him run up front. I don't think we're gonna see him win any motos, but I think he's gonna be inside the top 10. I got an issue with this. Is he actually a rookie? Because he rode last year. Because of that rule. I love that rule, by the way. I hate that rule. Why? The the rule that if you make less than 75 points, yes, you can still run Yes, that's great. Loretta. So you can still maintain your amateur status and then test Dude, if you're ready to turn pro. That's bragging to me, in, in my opinion. I feel like Dude. the amateurs are meant to be there for amateurs, and the pros are meant to be for what? the pros. Like, look at Jet Lawrence. He was able to do that, and then... Some dude that's on a factory team gets to come in and, and play the game of the pros and then go back to Loretta and just wax everybody. I, I did, don't like Did it. Jet come back after that? To No, we found out he was good enough, so he went pro. Yeah. I think that's why the rule's good. Because well, you can't you can dip your toe in and then we don't have more of the Chris Aldridge type situations. So you can go and guess what? If you go to that national and you think you're ready and you find out, holy crap, I'm not, you can go back to the amateurs. I like it. Yes, you can sandbag. There's always going to be people that are going to manipulate the system, but I like the rule. I completely disagree. I hate the rule. 
If you look back at Dungey, he was never a pro. He just went from B rider and out. And why is it that we have B riders being able to then hop on a factory team and start? I, I see that. We I really am preaching disagree. to the choir right there. No, I totally okay. agree with you. This whole B A system in the amateurs. I watched Loretta's. I don't know who the premier class is. I think the B guys are faster than the pro sport guys. When I was it's at ridiculous. Loretta, Dungey had the fastest lap time over Dean Wilson and Jason Anderson in the pro class. And I just thought it was absurd. If you look at any amateurs, absurd. that that's why I feel like we should get rid of all these uh, age group deals so that you can't sandbag. Go back to the, hey, if you win six races, then you have to move up. Or if you got... 10 top fives or whatever it used to be at least at kind of an ama rule book level i'd have to look it up then you go from novice amateur pro and then you're stuck in that designation so that you can't have like basically a local pro show up at loretta's in the novice class and run it, it, it's convoluted it, i don't agree with it when i think a lot of that comes from not racing all the time so they don't race all the time so there's no way to advance out of that certain class so you just you're a B all year long, and you race five times, and you're at the national. You can't and move a guy out of the national. I don't feel that that's good for this sport in general to have all these top riders not race their local track, their lo local. I just don't think it helps the sport. If we could have those guys race locally, and they could build the sport from within, all the states would build up. We'd have more riders, and just sort of what you want to do at a professional level is have these guys get paid more and literally help the sport. I think it starts from some of the decision making of the amateurs that I don't agree with, what AMA, what MX Sports, the powers that be have done there. But I know we're kind of going to convoluted. We can oh, talk we about can, this we can do this. a whole show on that. Okay, so let's go with your uh, biggest disappointment. Who's your biggest disappointment gonna be? I hate to do this because he's one of the nicest guys out there, Alex Martin, the troll train. Suzuki. We could just say right uh, yes, there. Yes, I'm sorry. I, okay, I'm sorry, Suzuki. I rode a Suzuki for a long time. It was a great 450. I'm a vet rider. I, I had no, I I had no issues with that I bike. I like uh, puke yellow. Yeah, I think they look good. It's not puke yellow. I like the way they look. I, I But at the highest level, the difference between first and tenth being just fractions. You can't ride a bike that's that old. It just... It just I don't, and JGR is amazing at what they can do as far as getting power out of it. But when you start so far behind the eight ball, it's rough. Let me ask you this. There's some series, uh, I don't know that much about MXGP, but they're not on a production rule, are they? No, I believe they're on works bikes. So would you still have that same argument with Suzuki if they could have almost that unlimited resource within the budget if Suzuki was able to do that? Yeah, but that presents a whole new set of problems as far as differentiating the top guys from the privateers that you are so fond of, which you are. <laughs> uh, um, so I don't, I don't like that, but I feel like, you no, know, you have to have, I don't like the works bikes. I like to maintain some sort of uh, stock. Nah, I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd, have, to give that, a, I'd have to give question. that one a little more thought. Johnny okay. stumped me here on that one. So, But no, Alex Martin, He's a guy who has been consistently a top three guy, won nationals. When he was on Yamaha's, he was so fast. How old is he now? He's got to be getting up there. Man, he's got to be like 40. No, I, yeah. I don't know. He's, he's closer he closer to, he's got to be around the Davalos age, 30-ish. Okay. 30-ish. But he looks 20, so I don't think anyone See, actually that's questions the problem. it. Not, not and that's not fair, because like you said, Benny Bloss looks like he's mid-30s where, yeah. I'm going on a tangent there again, and I, and I will stop. Why do we have these vet riders? <clears throat> Hold your apple juice, everybody. He said he was going to stop. He's not stopping. That's not saying you're not going on a tangent and then going on a tangent. And then you have the narrator digressing by keep talking. Hmm. Does he have anything valuable to say? In the 250 class. Because they can't. I know why. It's because they can't land a ride. Because he's three feet tall. Okay. All right. All right. But it, just n jokes aside, it's because they can't get a ride on the 450 class and make a living. That's why we're having all these vet riders stay so long. We even, my big, biggest disappointment is gonna be his brother. And maybe there's a little bit of bias 
just what he did in Supercross with dipping out so that he could stay in the 250 class. Yes, I agree. He's got to do what he's got to do for the best interest of him and his family. It just sucks that the way the rules are and the way the sport is that you can have riders mark out and not have a ride like past champions of Malcolm Stewart and whatnot. And I just feel Jeremy Martin is up there. He's on that Geico Honda. I His expectations are to win, and I think he's not going to deliver so for that reason alone, I don't know if it's going to be his back with the, the longer motos. I just don't think he's going to get it done. So he's going to be my biggest disappointment. And it's there's a little bias there from Supercross because I wanted to see him battle with those guys up front, and he kind of dipped out, and then he was shady about but don't, it. But don't be mad about him. Like, that's not his fault that the you rule's are, that right. way. And, yes, he got caught red-handed, but at least he admitted it after he got caught red-handed. Did you get credit if you've been caught when you still admit it? I don't know if that's how it works. No? But. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he definitely got caught. Remember, he was at the airport and leaving town. Yeah, yeah and he and... said he was picking somebody up, and he was actually just riding home. You, you are right. That's Chad Reed went on to say that there was... But I don't blame him. I would do the same thing. If it was my career on the line, and you tell me I can go and get third place at three rounds, or I can dip out, get ready for the outdoors, and have a fat contract, and get one more year to try it in the 250s, you bet your ass I'm going to do that. Yeah, but I, I would imagine you would, too. When you put absolutely, that's all I wanted to do. But uh, I'm just going back from a corporation standpoint. I hope more people are seeing the issues that are at foot. And if you wanted to take the high road, he wouldn't have done that. But being in somebody's shoes, it's always about money. So therefore, you got to do what's best for you. But at some point, something has to change so that we don't have riders that oh, this is just what happens. You know, he's dipping out because. Um, he's going to point out and, and move on. I feel the 250 class is designed to be sort of the Formula 2 of Supercross and Motocross and the elite guys that are champions and are getting paid the most is supposed to be the 450 class. But the 250 class should be full of the Carson Mumfords, all these guys okay. showing up. I agree with you in that sense. But the problem with it is the manufacturers pay all the money, right? What's their, do they sell more 250s and 450s or equal amount? So those are equally weighted. And if all the series money is coming from the manufacturers, guess what? They're going to weight those two classes equally. So if the promoter says this is the B and this is the A, well, that's fine. But I don't care about that. I'm caring about selling bikes. And I need 250s to win. And that sells bikes. So unfortunately, it has more value. We, we could go about this. In yeah, no, I, I agree. And, I, and what I would do is I would take the 250 class in the Supercross and I would just open it up, but I would still keep regions. That way, if you have two regions, it's not going to ever be the Premier Series. And you're so still you're saying for motocross have or, two regions? I mean, no, in, in, in Supercross. Those two regions, open them up. Keep the regions, but just don't ever kick anyone out. Let them go as long as they can win. Mike Brown would be a 10-time 250 champion if, if that was the case. So be it. If you never want to move to the Premier class, that's on you. All right, we can we can uh, debate about that later. I, I, clearly, we had have, we got to have another one about this because like we're not seeing the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but we have sort of the same and the two fifty outlook. I of, think they're both what? premier classes. Like it's one twenty five championship or a two fifty championship. I keep calling it one twenty five because I'm from the eighties. Yeah, uh, two fifty championship and a four fifty championship. They're both championships. There's not like a premier. They're they're kind of. I mean, yeah, we all know well, the four fifty. Well, they called it the lights for a while there too, which just gave it the designation. And if that's what the everyone was wanting, the, the powers that be wanting to perceive it as, as two equal championships, well, they, they shouldn't have called it in the lights. And I know they've changed it right now, but it just, it made it seem like it was light beer. Well, let's so. give them less TV time and less, if you want it to be a, a stepping stone class, let's not give them the same amount of press. See, let's just turn the 250 class into a stock class. Let's just do it from there. So that all the money I would love goes that. I would love the that. riders. And you could have every 40 rider on the gate be a factory backed rider so that they were getting paid, not getting paid $250 a moto. But we're not in control. So moving on, who is your privateer standout? It, again, this is an open end question. It could be somebody that is 35 years old that's been a privateer forever and somebody that just got kicked off a factory team, but somebody that is going to do well in the series under your stipulations of what you think should be awarded this prestigious we pick the privateer i'm gonna go with enzo lopes 
Really? He's been around for a while? He has, and he looked really good in Supercross. My one issue is I have not heard, and I asked her and I couldn't find. I don't know if Enzo, if, you, if you're if you healthy, please let us know. But he hurt his shoulder. Did you see him dislocate his shoulder in Supercross at Salt Lake? I, Popped it in and raced. You were actually at all six of them. No, I wasn't. I, you I, were not? No, no. I, uh, I went and uh, wrenched for Travis Del Nicky at one round. Okay. But no, I can't. I, I have another job. I couldn't stay there the whole week, the whole time. You had to quarantine, and it was they were very strict on it. And nobody the, wanted the brain swab. Nobody wanted to be the one you, that you screwed that up. You didn't want to wear a mask, right? No, I wear the well. Yeah, I don't want to wear masks ever, but I will because I don't want people freaking out and. So we can go racing. I don't want to do this mask issue because I'm going to get mad. Okay. All right. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> Did you see my? Like, if you want to see something funny, scroll down on my Instagram. I had a, uh, a paintball mask that I was using at the grocery store just because I could breathe and just to see if people would I, notice. I did think that that was funny and I was going wild. People got really that? mad. Yeah. I've I... seen people cut holes in the mask so that they can breathe. The, the, the big thing now is <sighs> moving it down here. And then the, the funny thing is, is if you go to a restaurant, um, as long as you're sitting down, you can't spread germs. But if you stand up and go to the bathroom, you can spread. But anyway. Hold on. Hold. I'm here in visiting Hopper in his hometown. Um, I have I stayed with some friends. They're both nurses at the Mayo Clinic. So I got some pretty solid information about masks. They're not helping people. All right. My privateer is going to be pretty much a veteran. His name is Cody Williams. He's going to be riding a 125 Husky. And he says he's going to go to three rounds at least. And I just like going to hear the two-stroke out there. Last year, I don't think he got into the top 20 to make points, but he was around that 25th, 26th place. I would love to see him get inside the top 20, make a little bit of points, uh, especially on a, a white KTM, white gas gas, Okay, I, a two-stroke. I'm, I'm okay with a guy going out there for fun. But what's his end goal? Is he trying to be Stank Dog? I Stank don't think Dog so. made the 125 famous by making the Nationals, and it, it really did help his career because everyone talked about him. Steve Mathis called him Lobster Claw for the longest time. Do you remember that? I, I don't remember that. Um, and it, it really became an issue, but it got him the publicity to make him the Stank Dog. Is is he trying to draw attention, or is he just doing it because it's fun? What's his motivation? His motivation is he's just doing it for fun. You know, as we okay, I can't I can't hate on that. But if you're trying to be competitive and really Dude, continue the, with the sport, that's a bad idea. If he's trying to be competitive, he's much faster on his 450. I would like to see him race the 450 class, and I would definitely think that that kid would be a top 20 guy almost at every round that he wanted to. He's real smooth, real good kid, but he's just going out there for fun. And like you said, you can't hate on that because so much of us, people like me, get really biased about the sport. And just him... Just sheer racing out there is just cool to see. And it's on a 125, so um, moving on well, to... Hold on. Let's be honest. Anyone outside of a factory rig is losing money racing these races. So if you want to go have fun, why not? Well, and we all know how draining it is to load up in a box van and spend 20 hours sleeping, no showers. It's just a private your life is just a hard life for these guys. Um, and it, it just blows my mind that people still are that passionate about the sport to go risk themselves to ride their edge, whether it be a 40th place edge or a top 20 edge. I, I just got to give it up to him, and so that's why he's my, my privateer pick. Good on him. So moving on to fifth place. Chris, who do you think your fifth place is? So I'm going to go with a guy who I don't think a lot of people are talking about. Rockstar Husqvarna's Michael Moseman. Oh, really? Okay. Do you remember how fast he was last year? I did. He got on the podium a couple times. He's a likable guy. He didn't really do, do much. No, um, he had some moments, but I just I got I just have a feeling that Moseman's going to get up there, and I, I would expect him to make some noise, and he's fast, man. Um, so, yeah, I got him in, in fifth. I'm going to go with Shane McElrath on the Star Racing Yamaha. I know he's more of a... Supercross guy? Until he goes 1-1. One, one. So, okay, so he's obviously higher up on, on his list. No, 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 when he went 1-1. One, one. No, I don't have him in the top five because there's zero consistency. But remember last year, out of nowhere, he's getting outside the top ten, and then he goes 1-1 one, one at, uh, what round was it, Bud's Creek? What round did he? Like, how did, where did that come from? Like, it was so weird. 
Um, I got my little cheat sheet here to see. He finished ninth last year. Yeah, um, it was Bud's Creek. Yeah, Bud's Creek. Went. Out of nowhere, does a guy who's not even on the podium just dominate? What the hell? There, there's no answer for that. But that's why it was hard packed. I call him the best hard pack rider of this generation. Okay, well then why didn't he just dominate everything for Utah with it being so he hard did, packed? He did until it rained, and he was going to win that rain race until he ran into uh, well, he, the restarts killed him. Take away those restarts, and he's champion. Well, he's definitely, I but think, on the best Sexton's bike good. for the 250 class. All right, so fourth place. Who's your fourth place rider? Fourth place. Who was your fifth place? Oh, it was McElrath. Okay, yep. so. I'm going to go with uh, Jeremy Martin, who's your disappointment. I could easily be wrong, and he could win, because he has fourth been getting place ready. is why he's my disappointment, because if he gets fourth place, he's disappointed. Yeah, anyone else getting fourth place is like, oh, fourth place, it's awesome. But for a, a guy who's won this championship twice, who probably should have advanced to the 450 class had he not had that horrific injury, um, what's going to be interesting to watch is him and Justin Cooper interacting. You know, there's still, still bad blood, because Justin Cooper crossed over and hit him when he had his massive injury. He still blames him. Do you think there will be any payback there? I hope not. Uh, maybe in the form of just some verbal cues. I hope there's nothing, no altercations on the track because I feel we need to have less of that. And it would be just as far as a narrative, if you're going with that with a narrative, oh yeah, let's, let's try to sell some tickets, get some more fans involved because I feel there's no such thing as bad press. So if these guys get into it, I want to see it on NBC Sports Gold or whatever it is. I want to have some of the leaked footage in the pits of them not liking each other. But hopefully nothing happens on the track. You mean more storylines? More storylines, exactly. That's Dude, what we need. That's drama what we need. sells. It is what it is. My fourth place is going to be RJ Hampshire. That's good. On I Suzuki. He on Suzuki. Uh, <laughs> Husky. Husky. Oh, if he's Husky. on a Suzuki, he's not getting fourth. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, if he's on a Suzuki, he's, he's, he's not getting... He, even even coming off the ACL? I think he's had time. Uh, um, I know ACLs Ooh. usually take three months to... Three months with a good doctor and some other programs happening. Six months, naturally, you're back up to speed in about nine months. And that's why I think he's going to be fourth. It's because I really think that RJ Hampshire has the ability to run top three every weekend but I think he's going to be timid to put in that, especially at a track like Loretta that gets really, really ruddy. You are not going to want to dab your foot. So I don't see him having any sort of a breakout until halfway through the season. Yeah, that's I can't really argue with you there. I would. I, I wanted to put him in my top five. And he finished fourth last year too. So, I mean, we're just going four for four. Yeah, not a bad call. And he's actually, I think he's better on the Husqvarna than he was on the... Uh, Dude, everyone is. I think you would be too if you got off the Yamaha. Off the Honda, you mean? I thought you were on a Yamaha. <laughs> I can't follow these guys. Are they joking? Are they serious? <sighs> They're jokes. Dry. Oh, well, no, he was on a Honda, though. No, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about you. I'm on a Yamaha. I got better when I got a yeah. Yamaha. What are you yeah. talking about? I got off a of KTM onto a Yamaha, and I'm better with the Yamaha. I think you might even be able to take out more guys from the outside if you were on a Husky. Truthfully, I don't want anything to do with anyone on the track. I ride my own run. I'm out there for fun. People leave me alone. Okay. All right, all right. Especially you, Hopper. I'm in the vet class now, so you'd have to. Yeah, I don't even race. I'm just I'm riding. I don't want to race anymore. I might I might do the. Are you doing the vet nationals this year? Dude, I've never done it. I haven't ridden in um, like three months at this point. I don't have much desire to ride at the moment for some odd reason. Because um, it's so like 120 outside. It is here in Arizona. It's like 120 outside. Uh, but. If I do, that, that would that would be fun, you know. But I considered it. We'll see. It's November. Maybe we got, we got some time. Maybe I could show up and start taking some people out. There you go. Third place. Who's your third place? Justin Cooper. Interesting because mine is Justin Cooper too. He could easily win this thing. He is fast, and the, what he's got going for him is starts. He's always up front. He's always see, giving I think himself. His confidence is what is the thing that's going to inhibit him from winning the series. You think he lost confidence after the Supercross performance in Salt Lake? I do. Well, uh, I guess they were heavily prepping for outdoors before Salt Lake. And I don't think he really even wanted to go back to Supercross. He's looking, well, the, he, he knows he can win outdoors. Those, He's an outdoor guy. Those Supercrosses, at least the last couple of them in Utah, look so cookie cutter that it was, I almost felt dangerous for the riders because 
it was an easier supercross. And if you want to have some sort of a hybrid, almost like the old, what was it? The, it wasn't a monster, I guess kind of like a monster cup. I know it was full of supercross, he had a full set of whoops and everything, but I don't know where I'm going with this. He's my third place. But they did a great job. I don't want to trash anything about what they did to get those races that, off. They got a completed series. That's badass. And, and switching it, I would like to see more Wednesday night races. I think oh, that, that, that would be cool, right? Having these guys, because the risk versus reward, every time these guys get on the bike, I, I'd have to do some statistics with their, their actually every time they get on the bike. But there is a 5% chance of these guys having a serious injury every time they throw a leg over it. And so for them getting injured at a practice track, is just a waste of their talent, a waste of people's sponsorship money. It would be, I hate to say it, helpful to have that happen at a race. And I know they would rather get hurt at a race than in a practice track. If you're just inevitably putting it on, throwing paint on the wall, saying that, hey, you are going to get hurt 5% of the time. You'd rather do it racing for some money and some prestige. I know that sounds really no, shitty. No, but, but it is what it is. I get it, though. Every time you ride, you take chances. It's better to have something win, on the line. Uh, three moto wins last year and it was only three it felt like more uh, let me, let me no i believe you I, I believe it was only three but i, I got because he had so here. many races where he was leading and it was weird that when he finally won it felt like he'd already won like four times i believe you i think that's correct yeah and it was only at the beginning of the season and yeah, he did fall off he had like a mid-season lull just like the previous year but i feel like he's a little older a little stronger yeah. um He's going to be right there. He's going to be in the mix. He'll be consistently on the podium. And with a little bit of luck, Half this the could be his. Half the time he was on the podium, yeah. as far as motos go. A little bit of luck, he could be in this. So, so. if he gets rid of some of those out of fifth place, he will he should be able to be. Yeah. I'm saying third. He's saying third. Moving on to, to second place. I want to know who your second place guy is. Okay, this is where I'm going outside the box and I'm uh, going outside my Vegas roots and I'm going with a long shot in my number one because everyone's going to go Dylan Ferrandis one. I got Dylan Ferrandis number two. The reason being is he's had a lot of distractions right now. He's trying to find a 450 ride. He was talking about a gas gas deal. That fell through. So it looks like he's the Yamaha guy. Now they're, oh, now, they're, now they're figuring dude. out whether it's Star and he moves to the 450 or if they're going to do the Yamaha. It looks like he's going to be on Star and that'll be the factory team. Because you're thinking Star is taking over. Yes, according to Steve Mathis. And then I also checked with an agent and yes, I believe that's what's happening. I don't, like I said, I don't. If what you say is true, that they're dismantling the team and starting over from scratch, Dylan is the appropriate guy to lead that team to maybe get some good finishes. But I know in my... JGR gas gas video. I really didn't want to see Dylan on a Yamaha. And then yeah, he'll, and the other guy in Yamaha is Plessinger. I did hear you on one of those said his contract's up. He actually has one more year. And Tickle is filling in for him. But this, just that, just this just 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 the rest of 2020, 2021 is Plessinger signed through the whole year. Dude, that guy get one more year in Yamaha. All right, but that's 450. Yeah yeah sorry. So. But yeah, no, Dylan Ferrandis is, with the distractions, with the, the 450 team, he's got a history of bad starts. Um, and with starting at Loretta's with those ruts, and I just, I, I think it's going to be too little. In a, in a short series, he needs to get better starts. I, I agree with you. He's also my second. Uh, he had nine moto wins last year out of the 24. I'd say that's a pretty good statistic when it comes to being up front. I think him being a European guy, I think he's going to do well at... Tennessee, just because all the, the tracks over in Europe are real hard pack. I mean, they're, they're overwatered and they get these gnarly, gnarly ruts and bumps and the tracks are even more treacherous by come the motos actually. And I think Tennessee kind of has the same sort of European feel to it, just my opinion. Maybe not so much being dry because Tennessee is always real watery and, and humid. But as far as the roughness goes, I'm excited to see. The, I say he wins round one. I say he wins. Yeah, round one. and I'm so excited to see the pros on an amateur track. And there's been all this talk about, oh, it's so small. It's actually not that small. That thing's well, pretty how wide. How many people do they pack for the amateur national? Yeah, they have the facility to pack thousands and thousands of fans. Well, and this week, watch the start. So it's going to be funny because almost everybody who hits the the whole shot line first isn't the leader after the first few turns because they got those S's. Yeah. That, that, that might play to some of these guys that start mid-pack who can carve through right off the bat, and they might end up in the top five. So it's, I'm just excited to see the pros on that track. 
MX Sports, Racer X, they've gone to say that they are never going to have another pro national at Loretta's, which I think is a bummer. I think they should continue to do it. All right. So moving on from second place, we are going to go with your first pick. Hunter Lawrence, the GP star who won motos last year. And I, I find it hilarious that all the pressure is on his younger brother, but I think for the right reason. I think he's going to win the series, not his brother. Yeah, I don't know. I talked to some people close to them. Um, Hunter is definitely better outdoors and stronger. He's a little bit older. He's been through the GP series. Jet has that a little bit of a natural ability to him to where he, he's got speed and he's going to be up there, but I don't think he was, he's going to have he the was consistency. He 10th last year. You're, you're saying he's going to go from a 10 to a 1. Well, he was out most of the year. He So it looks like he missed two, he missed three nationals. Of the well, 12th. when he came back, he wasn't that healthy because remember he tore his ACL. True. And right before he left, um, he won, he won a moto. Creek. Yeah. He did. And, and, and another thing about Hunter, too, is he's now he's been to the, most of the tracks. But even with that, he, I don't think, would have been inside the top 10. Well, no, and that was his rookie season over here. And he, these are all new tracks. It's not like Europe where they get a long time to learn them. But now most of these tracks he'll have been through, been to most of, once or twice. Uh, Loretta's, obviously, that's different for everybody. And I don't know if he ever raced Loretta's. I don't think he did. Um, I'd have to look at it, but you're probably right. But that's only one track, and a lot of other people will try be in, have to figure that out, too. It's interesting because there was a lot of hype on him last year coming over. Yes. And he was under-delivering, and then finally he got those couple moto wins. But in Supercross... Well, he, he didn't did, race Supercross. He was well, hurt. The end of it at the Utah. Oh, the oh last, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I was thinking was two there. years ago, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He didn't... I, I'm sorry. We're... we're, we're we got we got wrong lines. yeah wrong years, I'm older. So younger. you're saying that now that the hype is now on Jet Hunter's going to have the breakout. Yes. So where do you think Jet's gonna? Jet's gonna be this? up there and he's gonna be. He's gonna be exciting. Jet Lawrence is must see TV. I don't know that he has the physical conditioning to stay there. I mean, he likes to eat donuts and goof off. And his body hasn't matured. What was interesting is we were talking about that amateur rule. Jet, by the way, is my pick to win the series. I think he's sort of the AC of the 250 class. Is I think he's going to be the fastest guy, the most just just sheer speed as far as to win races. If he keeps his consistency, I think he's going to win. But it's interesting you said that his fitness, because when he was doing a little amateur deal that we disagree about, <laughs> um, I believe it was at Unadilla, he even posted that, I don't know how these guys on his Instagram, he said something, I can't believe that these guys are able to go this long for this whole moto and go this fast. And it was almost like he was implicating that there's more to the story there, and then he took down the post. I wasn't able to screenshot it or anything. Hmm. That's interesting. I didn't know that he did that. But I, I don't know. I just feel like, I mean, he's, what, 16, 17 now? Yeah. Your body doesn't develop that strong endurance until you hit, like, your 18 to 25 range. And he's going against men. And his brother is one of those men. And Dylan Ferrandis. And while he has the speed and the talent to get up there and he can get away with that in Supercross, it's going to take a couple years to outdoors to get that grind, that just hammer through it. So he's good, but he's not going to be – his brother's going to be battling for the title. And I'm going out a little bit out on the limb because nobody's heard from him and he didn't do much in Supercross. But Hunter Lawrence is legit. And I think he's going to surprise some people. And they've done a ton of work on that Geico bike because it, it sucked last year. When was the honest. last time we had an Aussie win the championship? Have we ever had an Australian champion? Well, Reed in Supercross, but yeah. Outdoor National. But it's it, been a while. He has, yeah, Reed won Outdoors. Yeah, I think that's the last one. Okay. Yeah, so have to be. Either one of the Lawrence brothers are going to take on the W or we're both wrong and it's probably going to be Dylan. I want to know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know your d biggest disappointment, your rookie, your standout, and fifth through first. You know, we'll we'll argue. I think Chris might actually get involved too in the comments. We'll see. But if you want to ask him some questions, please head over to his blog and his Instagram and your podcast. Cooksymedia.com. Podcast is Cooksy and the Coach. I got the always genius and uh, opinionated Rob Beams on there with me. We talk uh, a little bit of garbage, a little bit of knowledge, and uh, spread some stuff around. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. Be sure to watch that 450 pre-race show. And until next time, this is Johnny Hopper. Do you want to, do you know how to?
Chris you Cooksey. Want, you want to do 125? Bro, 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 bro. That's all you, bro. I got a bro, YZ 450. Bro, yeah, his sounds like Weed Whacker. Me, me, 